Welcome to Build. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Build. I am your host, Ricky Camilleri. In 2016, television viewers were riveted by the first season of FX's American crime story, The People vs. O.J. Simpson. The Ryan Murphy produced show took the extremely well-known O.J. case and injected new life into it by examining race and criminal justice in the 90s in a way that only hindsight could have allowed. This season, Crime Story attempts to do something similar with hindsight and the story of Gianni Versace, played here by our upcoming guest, Edgar Ramirez, and his murderer, the serial killer, Andrew Kananen, played by our other guest, Darren Chris. Let's give them a round of applause, everybody. Before we get started, uh, I want to remind all of our guests watching from home that they can leave a question with the submit a question button right next to the video. For now, let's take a look at American Crime Story, the assassination of Gianni Versace. Shortly before 9 a.m., fashion designer Gianni Versace was shot on the steps of his villa. Miami is now at the center of one of the largest FBI manhunts of all time. For the second installment of American Crime Story, we're telling the story of Andrew Cunanan, a spree killer in the 1990s who climaxed with the very public murder of Gianni Versace. This is a heinous and inexplicable crime. Versace was very loved. Everybody who met him, they were fascinated by him, and nobody expected this. He was a creator. He was a genius. And my brother is still alive as long as Versace is alive. It is about the events leading up to the murder of Johnny Versace. Johnny Versace. Versace. Signore Versace. But also, we're going to understand how that could have been avoided. Suspect on the run in pursuit! <laughs> this particular manhunt is the largest failed FBI manhunt in history. Andrew Cunanan, 27 years old, he's killed four men. Why do you think he's now in Miami? We don't know where he is. People were scared. The fact that this man was killing gay men, still some people don't understand why it happened. I'm Andy. So what do you do? I'm a serial killer. For every season of American Crime Story, what we're interested in is what makes this an American crime, a crime America is guilty of, not just the characters we're exploring. He's going to target closeted, older, wealthy homosexuals. So you don't want to canvas South Beach as well? Andrew's journey is a journey through the politics of homosexuality as they played across America in the 1990s. You tell gay people you're gay and straight people you're straight. I tell people what they need to hear. Versace has invited me to the opera. Life is special. Help! Life is precious. You've given him nothing. That is how I feel. I'm so happy right now. The truth is, you know, fear and prejudice, unfortunately, is always in fashion. Everybody, please! Uh, Edgar Ramirez and Darren Chris. Bellas, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. Thank God, you. That's such a cool trailer. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's amazing. And it, I think it's a, a great primer for people who haven't seen it yet, depends on, because of what they might be expecting after last season. Yeah, I, jo I, jo I joke that a good trailer is kind of like auto-tune and Photoshop. They, uh, they really make me look a whole lot better than I did on the day. Um, so, uh, yeah, that, I, I'm glad that people are excited about it. You're quite good in the, in the show. I've watched four episodes. Both of you guys are, are great. Let's talk about inhabiting these characters and what you knew about them before going into this and what you learned about doing it. Talk about portraying Gianni Versace. Well, I mean, Darren wasn't born yet when this... When I... You no. were, you were. When was that? Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you were born, what, in 90... Uh, late, late 80s. Late 80s. Yeah. So, yeah, you were around, but not, you know... Yeah, remember. not to not to consciously. Yeah, not, yeah I, I I do remember. Yeah, um, I was nineteen when 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 that all that all went down. Um, and of course, um, Versace was a was a was a global icon at the time. So so I so I do remember very well when when he was assassinated and and the and the, and the turmoil that that caused and and the fear and and how Miami changed forever after that moment. Um, and, um, and, and yeah, it was, uh, it, you know, what, what, what is really interesting is what, what we knew then and what we thought that we knew, what we understood of that crime at the time and what will be revealed, you know, through the show. I mean, although, although I think there will be a lot of redemption and also, um, a lot of facts that will be, that will be righted, um, through the show. 
Go ahead, Darren. I was going to say, did you wear a lot of Versace at 19? Were you, were you into that? Was that just Clearly, I could afford it. Yeah, I mean, it's like a, everything was Versace. It was 19, man. Um, yeah, no, nothing. No, I still don't. Yeah, yeah, I still don't. And I don't know, and after this show, I don't know if I will ever. So who knows? Yeah. Um, talk about Andrew Kananen and, and what, you could have, what you learned about him, what you could have learned about him. It's a, it's a really phenomenal performance, Thanks, what you're man. doing. I mean, there's, yeah. there's uh, I actually, you know, Edgar had a, a tougher mountain to climb considering that this was a real person that had, uh, he had access to a lot of the people that were very close to him and uh, he had a, a, a huge, you know, magnanimous profile between a, a lot of uh, famous people uh, that that you could sort of derive from videos and stuff like yeah. that of of of, interviews, of, yeah. of interviews and stuff, really kind of getting to uh, to Johnny. Whereas uh, that was the complete opposite for for me with Andrew, which almost is sort of freeing because now I'm uh, I'm almost exonerated from a an Im like. I, an imitation, or not saying it was an imitation, but I, I'm not. I don't have to worry about trying to. He's not somebody that people are familiar with, right? So it gives me more room to fill in a lot of blanks on my own. But that said, I would say you're very much doing an imitation here, in the sense that he's constantly doing an imitation. Of exactly, a and that, the, the, which brings me to my point, which is, yeah, that's sort of this meta quality of of me imitating an imitator that that already had so many different personalities on his own that you know it, it was just a matter of picking one and and using whichever one seemed most useful to him at the time with whichever person it, I mean whatever context so uh and there's also this element of him and I think in your performance where you know how good he is at imitating a person in different moments or in different scenes depends on the scenario that he's in and exactly. who he's talking to exactly. and so you have these wonderfully weird moments where like you're talking to a hotel clerk in one of the episodes and he's sort of off the wall imitating someone here and then you have another scenario where he's actually quite good at the imitation mm -hmm. and you know you could understand someone believing who who he says he is in this moment yeah i mean there's a couple different versions of andrew i'll say i'll boil it down to three there's the actual andrew kunana that walked and talked on this earth who none of us will ever know or have any access to uh, the second one is is the Andrew that I can kind of glean from uh, Maureen Orth's book, which is the book that this entire series is is based off of, um, which is a, a, a huge tome of of accounts the, of of people that knew him at all parts of his life. And then there's the the Andrew Kunana that is presented in the scripts written by Tom Rob Smith and the world created by Ryan Murphy. And at the end of the day, that's the one that I'm servicing. That is my guiding light. So, no matter uh, how well or not you knew him. It's almost it's almost irrelevant because this, the the narrative arc that interests me and the one that that is my sort of master and commander is is that and that's the one I have to service as an actor. So, um, yeah, that, at the end of the day, that kind of it, it was nice that I didn't have to be like, oh man, I really hope I sound like Andrew on this one, or or, or or people who know him will watch and go, oh, that's just like him. That it's not that's not what it's about. It's it's finding the same emotional content uh, that that leads up to a lot of the actions that we know and um, because. Uh, there's so much we just don't know and, and we'll never know so we're not it's not an expose on what really happened in that car ride or in that room or in that hotel it's more about what are the emotional beats that we can play to somehow make sense of the things that we do now well, no, it's an extrapolation of the story in order to service a greater point about sure, this absolutely. period of time and sexuality homosexuality in this period of time how it was viewed by the outside world how, what it was like to be closeted all of these sort of uh, all of these narrative strands of this moment it does sort of for ra for for this period of time and for sexuality, it does what they did for race in the O.J. Simpson one, yeah, yeah. story. Yeah, it's. I mean, they said that in the first look, so it feels like I might have stolen that. But that's no, what I got from watching it. It's too. exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, and that's something that is that is really interesting because it's predominant not only in Andrew's narrative but Johnny's as well. Yes. And and how uh, as this series progresses, you know, we watch uh, sort of the heroism that Johnny displayed with that ad advocate interview. Um, you have this extremely successful. Uh, public figure heroically coming out at a time when when people in his uh, in, of of his pedigree were not doing that, and Johnny was the first to do that. Yeah, yeah no, and also and also when you when you look into this investigation, I mean, the element that always comes back to the surface is this in the most nineties of ways is this don't ask, don't tell you know element to it. I mean, it was almost as as through this investigation and by ignoring by by not really becoming a joint force in order to get this guy the message that somehow was being sent. It was basically a denial of a gay world out there, that basically there is a denial of sexuality. 
and the fact that 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 Darren's character, Andrew Cunano, was on a killing spree for so many months. His face was on the on on you know on on, on the evening news night after night. Um, even I was in Venezuela at the time, and I remember Andrew Cunana's face. And but basically, he did not represent a public threat to the authorities at the time. He was living and openly, in living Miami, openly right? in yeah. Miami. I mean, he got there. I mean, he killed Jenny nine days after he arrived to Miami. So basically, um, uh, it's a it's it, it, it's a crime that could have been prevented if people had paid more attention. So and to think that that only happened 20 years ago. Yeah. You know, it's chilling and it's shocking. You know, and I think that one of the th one of the one of the elements of a rescue from the whole show, and that I hope that people walk away with, is to is, is, is to really is to really pay attention, to really pay attention to that, to to, to to things that just happened 20 years ago, and to liberties, you know, and to rights that can be taken away if you don't if, if you don't really pay close attention to them. I would I, I would suggest paying very close attention to to this show because I think unlike the last season of American Crime Story and really anything else on television, it takes a very uh, big bet on the structure of the show and getting an audience to stick with that. And if they do, it's going to be very rewarding. But I have never seen a story told like this on television, be it anthology or limited series or anything like that. Did you know it was going to go in that direction when they yeah. pitched it to you? I think w yeah, was, mm -hmm. I think we uh, hoped and and assumed it would because uh, it was nice joining the show with that first season having the credibility. It did I I, f I think I speak for both of us. We knew we were in good hands. Yeah. I mean Ryan's work obviously speaks for itself. So, um, yeah, what, we've said this a thousand times, but what made the first show so interesting is that it wasn't necessarily. It's not about the OJ crime. It's about everything around it and. Uh, that's what makes these stories more interesting because you know there's really something to discuss and talk about, and there's larger so social implications of the work you're doing. So, I just you know. mean in terms of the nonlinear aspect. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great answer. Yeah. But the <laughs> wrong. Yeah, I mean, because the, the things are basically basically what 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 Rob and the what Rob uh, what, what what Tom Rob Smith and the and the and, and the team of writers wanted wanted to do was to establish a parallel storytelling between the two characters. Right. Um, and 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 in order to because basically. This is a story of all the events that led up to Johnny's assassination, and, and it's based on a book written by Maureen Orth that basically explores all the investigation and, and Andrew Cunanan's um, journey until he got to Miami. Because mm -hmm. um, she was already she was already involved in investigating this guy even before yeah. he killed Johnny. Exactly, long before. But it was when he killed the famous gay guy when then everybody started to pay attention. So. In a, in a way, and this is something that, that, that I find so 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 moving and so smart, you know, from 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 the script and from and from Tom's work, and is that that he that he sees these two characters as one force that is a creating force and the other one is a destroying force, and he wanted to 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 somehow put those those forces in play and see how antagonistic they are to each other. I mean, they were both outsiders. They were both um, um, uh, people looking from the outside in, but what did they do with that anger, with that thirst, with that hunger? Did they change the world or they just, that, th those are the questions that the writers were placing all the time. And I think that that is brilliant, you know? Um, yeah, I think uh, something I was gonna say earlier as, as far as the, 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 um, the negative implications of, of, what, of what homophobia sort of uh, creates to a lot, for a lot of our characters is that, What's interesting is that, and this is the reason why I brought up the, the Advocate interview where, where Johnny came out, is that he, they were fighting a lot of the similar obstacles, and you know, uh, Johnny came out triumphant. He had success, he had fame and glamour, and, and even, even at another element that would have been an obstacle, he got through that. He could be a public figure and, and not only be gay and proud, but have love in his life and have a devoted lover and a devoted person, where these were all the things that Andrew was also fighting against, but couldn't get through it and felt defeated by them and couldn't have love and couldn't have the success and the glamour. So it's amazing seeing these two very different people fighting the same demons and just seeing the outcome of how two different, how a victory and a failure yields to two different things. Um, and it makes sense that that's why we see his other victims at the beginning of each of their episodes yes. at a moment of success or a high point in their life. Right. We see an incredible speech given by a wife, or we see a phone call that gave somebody a job, that they finally got a job or a, you know, a project through for which um, 
Cunanan is is witness to at that moment of everybody else being Everybody's sort of around him. Yeah. Bes- uh, in spite of the thing that's going on within themselves or the fact that they haven't come out yet or are uncomfortable with their skin and he can't he can't well I think that. you know where, whereas Johnny exercised his power in creation um, we were talking about destruction I think another word for destruction which is a more sort of accessible word to understand what we're talking about in the show is Andrew you know if he couldn't have it he had to take it and when you take a life that is the ultimate arbitration of ownership that is the ultimate I am literally quite literally taking your life um, if he couldn't have a lover he had to take the life of that lover if he couldn't have a symbol of wealth and power he had to take that from somebody and once and once that escalates and we get more into the psychology of what happens when you kill somebody once once it becomes less and less symbolic and it literally becomes about taking somebody's car when it becomes as fundamental and basic as that it gets to that yeah so so you know it kind of escalates and obviously you know johnny was the the penultimate version of that the ultimate one being even his own life you know i think andrew and this is a spoiler alert when andrew does end up taking his own life i think it's it's a byproduct of wanting to take control of his own narrative and if he's not going to be able, if, if he's not going to if he's going to go to prison or if he's going to be on trial he, the only arbiter of his destiny that he wants to to have be in charge is himself so that that's i think the ultimate display of this obsession of needing to to take something that is is being taken away um, and uh, it's cool because you you realize how how obviously horrible of an outcome that can have and how beautiful and moving in effect the other version of that desire to have control through creation and, and how that can touch lives in very positive ways. And uh, the juxtaposition of that in our show, I think, is really, really excellent. Because you think on paper, like, a- Andrew Cunanan and, and Johnny Versace couldn't be more different. That's awful. But there are similarities that I think are uh, quite important to recognize that, that raise much larger uh, questions. Well, similar to the context. I mean, because when one, one uh, as you said, one was uh, outing people and, sh- and shaming them. You know, so making making something horrible out of a condition that they both share, while the other one, Johnny, was empowering people and liberating people. You know, and and in the case of of of, of, of what he did, his legacy, he was mixing for the first time sexuality with fashion, some something that no one no one did before, not at this scale. You know, I mean, before before Johnny Versace's sexuality, sensuality, and glamour, they were on two different tracks, and he understood. You know, the rundown element and the sexuality from the 70s and understood the money and the opulence from the 80s. And when he married the two in the 90s, everybody were, went crazy. So we wouldn't be able to, to, to be invited to the first row of, of, a, of, of, a, of a fashion show, of a runway, if it wasn't for a culture that Johnny Versace created 20 years ago. That is the reason why, you know, we're dressing certain things. We are, I mean, this mixture between celebrity and cinema and music and this rock and roll, um, approach to, to couture and to high fashion is something that he invented. And for, and for better and for worse, we live in a time and in an era, um, this culture of the bling, I mean, this obsession for fame and celebrity, is something that he partially also helped to create, you know? And then, and then it's, 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 very, it's very interesting to see that, that, um, that a fashion designer had such a cultural impact. And I think that that, that, that was important. It was important for the show to explore Mainly uh, the creative side of this of this of this of this character, in order to understand the great loss when he's gone and when he's disappeared and killed and assassinated by 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 Andrew's character. Um, we love okay. talking about the show and this story. We we, we yeah. even even working on the show, just talking about these characters, even subjective of actually working on it as a project. As I hope you feel, I mean, it's, it's just endlessly there fascinating. Something. We'll just I'm sitting here going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we'll we'll talk about this for we, hours. We just finished basically, and we finished like the one in December, ago. like a few weeks ago. We're yeah. still in it, and we're still actually these conversations are almost like therapy for us. Yeah, it's like the first time we really get it's to like, kind of talk about stuff, and we're talking I mean, to like the media. Characters therapy, like we're talking about the characters yeah. for the first time. I mean, it's not that we had. I, you know, we had, well, I mean, you, you just, you, you know, you, you, your hair just grew yeah. from the last scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's I, I, I just could fit into this suit like a week ago, you know, because yeah. I, gained, I gained weight for the character. Yeah. So we just came out of this, of this show, you know. So for, for us, this doing press for the character, actually, when, when people ask us questions, we... We like to think about it and yeah, talk about, about it for the it. first we, time. Yeah, so. we are, we're listening to ourselves trying to, to, to piece it all together. Out. Uh, what the process was. Basically, you're a therapy. Thank you for being yeah. here for us. Thank Absolutely. you, guys. Yeah. But even hearing you guys talk about there's things, and I think it's a great compliment to this show, is that it doesn't over-explain anything. No. Because there are things that you're talking about that's like, oh, yeah, that is in there. I didn't realize that at the time. Or there's other elements. Even when I was watching it, it is constantly something that is 
um, evolving and t sort of telling you a different story as it progresses. It's not as it progresses. It's not like it lays out its thesis in the first episode and then kind of keeps doing that. There's something more that to know about what they're saying about Andrew, what they're saying about Johnny as the show progresses. Yeah, and also because he has a very uh, another element that I, that I rescue from 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 Tom Rob Smith's work, a writer, is that is that every like each episode and and that's why it really feels. I mean, sometimes I call it a film, I call it a movie because it yeah. A movie because it's like a f nine hour long film yeah. um, it doesn't really have an episodic structure because each episode revolves around a theme mm -hmm. so that's like an act so that is closer to a play or to a movie that to what we think for the lack of a better term episodic structure so um, that is very interesting because then, 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 then you can see all these elements, all these layers that we're discussing now, they're not really on your nose. I mean, they're not really there, like, like they're not preachy. They're just there for you to discover because each episode surrounds, you know, like revolves around one, 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 one subject, one theme. Well, I would say that what, what makes it uh, not episodic is the fact that you get to explore the lives of Cunanan's victims versus where rarely do you kind of get that in stories like this. Yeah. And in this, you really get to know each of the, each of the five victims. Which of, I think is a really, really important the part report. about our show. I think uh, because we're doing, because Edgar plays a character and I play a character on the show that we, we tend to talk about those, those people, but uh, for, because the show isn't out yet, uh, people don't realize that we do really examine uh, uh, the, the the several victims of of Andrew for those people who aren't even aware that this isn't just about the the murder of Johnny Versace. It's exactly. it's the four other uh, men that he he killed, and it's uh, and those are uh, stories and voices that I think up until now, at least in mainstream media, uh, have, have pretty much remained in the shadows. And um, it's kind I, of the the great narrative surprise, I think, of the show. I'm unfortunately, giving it away a little bit, but it doesn't go. It doesn't become the sort of history of Gianni Versace and like a biography. It becomes this exploration of the victims of this sort of circumstance and scenario mm -hmm. and victims of the context. Because it is of the not. Time. It's the assassination. Actually, there's a is the longest title in television right now. You know, promoting but, this has been tough. But assassin. It, 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 it is the story of the assassination, and assassination has a very clear political overtone. Yeah. Because he was assassinated, he was targeted, yeah, as was, all these yeah. guys were. So it is very, it is very important to keep that in mind as you, as you, you know, as tomorrow night you start watching this show, because assassination is a very important word to understand the, 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 the in a way, the underlying element of the whole story. Uh, we're having a very smart conversation about the show, but what was it? What, what did you think when they cast Ricky Martin alongside you? No, I had to. Is, 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 I got to do no. my job. I got to do my job, they, guys. No, you should. You've got a good story about that, right? Yeah, yeah. It was. It, it, it was. It was great. I mean, Rick is a very. I mean, he's a very good friend of ours. You know, one of my best friends. We 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 we, we knew we knew each other before. He was the first person uh, that I told that I had. You know, uh, that I had closed the deal on the on the show. We were supposed to see these galleries in in LA, and then suddenly I'm talking to my team and said, "Are we are we are, are we on? We're on." And then I, I, I get into the gallery. Hi, Ricky. Hi, how are you? And by the way, I'm I'm doing Versace. Oh man, this is so great. Blah, blah, blah. And and ah, I'm, so, I'm so proud of you. So great. Yeah, congratulations. And then about a week later, then Ricky texts me and said, "Guess who I'm having dinner tonight?" And I said, who? Ryan Murphy. And I said, you're going to be Antonio. He said, what? <laughs> you're going to be Antonio. I'm sure he's going to offer Antonio to you. And then they got together. And, and, then, and, 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 then, and, then, and then and then Ricky um, asked. Has there been any talk about it beforehand? Or was that a complete Nothing, nothing. Oh. No, no. And, and Ryan didn't know that we were close. I mean, there was no, 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 no uh, previous conversation about this. And then, and then they're, they're having dinner. And towards the end of the dinner, then he says, um, um, well, I mean, I, 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 I would love you to, 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 play, to play Antonio. Well, that's so great. Blah, blah. Who's playing Donatella? Because he knew who was playing Johnny. And then Penelope Cruz is playing Donatella. Wow, that's amazing. And then, OK, Ryan, I have to tell you, I, um, Edgar and I are, are close. We're friends. And I know that he's playing um, uh, Johnny, because he told me. And then, and then Ryan cried. He says, like, this is what? I, I want it, you know, like to have like to have this this, this level of, of of compassion and closeness that really helped, you know, to build the story. And he's an amazing actor and has got a got a great. I mean, he's like, really, he's a great. Yeah, he's a great actor. I, I will say, an amazing as the actor. Broadway guy between the two of us, I <laughs> I I've always known Ricky's a good actor. Ricky has a very illustrious Broadway resume. Um, 
he's a good actor, and I think people tend to be surprised. They they tend to forget that uh, that singers and performers are actors too. They 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 are showmen, and uh, Ricky is. I think people who are really effective, great artists and performing artists are are skilled beyond. Yes, he can sing. He can. He can shake his proverbial bonbon, but I think uh, he can also, you know, all that is connected to knowing how to connect to an audience and how to make people feel things. And uh, so when you see him on set, you you're like, oh, that's of course, of course, you're you're a wonderful actor. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was very, very, very obvious on set and on on camera too. He he looks great. So yeah, Ricky's. I think the two of you are, are wonderful in it. I think you're really, Thank really you. great. It's it's very moving to see that relationship between the two of them. Yeah. Let's get some questions from the audience. Who has a question? Who do you have, Oh, hi. You have yeah. a microphone. Hi. Hola, Edgar. Hola. <laughs> hi, what does that mean? What does that mean? Hola. It, it, it means hi. Oh. I'm Venezuelan. It means, I'm Venezuelan. It means Edgar, not you. Oh, oh okay. Oh. <laughs> I'm very proud of you. Oh, Thank my you. Contra. Thank um, you so much. What is the best advice? that your father give it to you? What's the best advice that you ever received from a professional mentor? Sorry, my English. Yeah, no, 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 no. Please, it's okay, <laughs> right. um, Sorry, my English. Yeah. Uh, the, the best advice that I got from my dad, um, to, be, to be polite to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, similarly, uh, I'll just, I'll go, I'll use my dad, I guess, as well, because you know it's a mentor as well. You know? uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's basically the same, except it's worded like a, you know, a, a, a true car, car salesman. My, my my grandfather was actually a Cadillac salesman, which sounds skeezy, cool. but think think of the oh, charming cool. side of that. Uh, and he used to say, "Everyone's a customer." Everyone's a customer, and while that sounds like a, a, a cheesy car salesman's line, you can apply much much bigger ethos to that, which is, you know, at any time, anybody can, is somebody that uh, it has value. Everybody has value, yeah. you know. Uh, That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's great. Next question. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> right here. Hi. Hi. If you could meet Gianni Versace himself, what would you say? Oh, that's a great question. Wow. Well, I don't know about you, but. Oh, I, I, <laughs> man, I have a lot. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, wow. Do you want? Do you want to? Do you want to think about? Yeah, it? I mean, it's like that. It's, it's, it's that moment where you say that, like, what you have. I, 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 wow, I don't know. That's a very moving question. You're gonna think uh, of such a good answer in like six, seven days. I don't know, now. man. Yeah, in six, yeah, exactly. You're gonna wake exactly. up in a yeah, cold sweat at night. I will tweet it, on in, in six days. Uh, it, what would I ask him? Uh, God, I don't know. You go. You're. You I, 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 um, I sort of had this very uh, profound moment when I walked into the house dressed as Andrew Kunan and recreating the scene that defines this television show and defines uh, the, the, the end of, you know, Johnny's life and, and, and reign. Uh, where, you know, seeing both sides of everything, it is without question, obviously, what, what Andrew did is horrible and deplorable and just that's, that's obvious, right? I hope that given all of the things we know about Andrew and the circumstances around him. I'm not, a, I wouldn't ask for forgiveness and I wouldn't ask for, um, I, I'm not trying to pardon anything that has happened, but I would tell, I would, a, I would hope that Johnny would understand what we were trying to do. I would hope that he would understand the larger social issues that we were trying to discuss. And I hope, and I would ask him to, uh, to kind of, I guess, see that we're trying to create some kind of light out of an overwhelming amount of darkness. You know, that this isn't, a, this isn't trying to exploit anything. We're not trying to sensationalize a, a, a death and a series of deaths or glamorize somebody who's done monstrous things, but we're trying to understand the darkest parts of not only this person, but our society as a whole and it's much bigger than these than these events. And I just I would hope that he, like I said, that he I would want to tell him we're trying to create light out of darkness. Because if it was just about the darkness, then there's there's no point. And I think as a lover of life and beauty and creation, I think I I think he would understand that. I would hope he would. I don't know, but that that would be the conversation I'd love to have with him. Well, that is basically what I what what I do hope that the family feels. 
And when when you know when when the cat is finally out of the bag tomorrow night, and the whole world, starting with the U.S. tomorrow, starts to see this series that on uh, FX, we, on FX, and on all different channels and and, and networks yeah, all over the world, the list, like, <laughs> you know. Uh, but uh, that 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 everyone, and I can speak on behalf of everyone, not only the cast but everyone involved in this project, that we walked into this with utmost respect and utmost compassion for these characters. Yeah, and for the tragedy that the family went through. I'll also add that in no way does the show attempt to sympathize with Kananen or, or, or uh, it, it mostly, from what I've seen, presents a context for when, for why this could have happened or for why this happened at this point in time. Right, and I, the idea is to leave the audience with, you know, we're, I, I don't think I'm directly asking for empathy or understanding. I, I think, I mean, yeah, the you, show yeah. begs questions. And then from there, you can decide for yourself how you feel about it or, or what you want to take from the show. But yeah, I, I think that would be the goal of the show. I hope that it doesn't, it's not hitting you over the head with, with any particular rhetoric. It's just kind of presents everything um, on a table and, and lets you kind of take it from there. Next question. Darren, hey, uh, I just wanted to ask you, uh, what was the hardest thing about uh, getting this role for you, uh, together for you, and like, what's the difference in the preparation of this role compared to something like so um, big as like Hedwig for you that has like a similar kind of role for you? Well, uh, the thing I like to remind people, and uh, I, this is not to to put anybody down. I said it once, and like it sounded mean spirited. Um, the thing that I think audiences tend to forget, which is a good thing actually, is that actors act that we're acting, and um, we, you know, it's, it, it is a, I kind of roll my eyes at this sometimes, but it's true, it is a craft. And uh, I treat all characters with the same amount of uh, due diligence that, uh, like, each, e each project gets, it gets it is equal to the same amount of currency, you know? So, yes, the, uh, somebody like Blaine existed in a very, in a lighter, funner, more surreal world, and he, and he followed certain rules that existed in a very, very different world than somebody like Andrew, which is a very dreary, complex world. But that doesn't mean that one is more significant than the other. You know, you're still boiling everything down to the same common denominators, fear, pain, love, desire, all the same things that we can all relate to no matter what, how we live our lives. Um, so, yeah, at the end of the day, I, you know, it's, it's, it's me just diving into the, the similarities between me and something else. Because every, every character, every person, everybody on this planet is the hero of their own story, you know? So you just have to jump into that mindset of, okay, well, even no matter how far or close I am to somebody, you find the, you find the, you find the primary colors between you and that person, and then that's what makes those crazy actions. We go, oh my God, how could you reenact this act? Well, you go, well, I, I make sure to get in touch and have access to the emotions that we all have access to because we are all capable of horrible dark things, but we're all capable of beautiful, moving, wonderful things simultaneously. Like, how cool is that? So it's just making sure that you can embrace those, those seedlings of those dark things and then kind of riding, riding the wave into the breakers. That's kind of my thing. What did you find were the primary colors? Uh, very simple things. Uh, uh, who doesn't know what it feels like to to want something that you can't have? To 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 want to rise above your station? To um, to to prove something to people? Um, to sh to to be liked? Um, now these all vary in degree. We you know we we all try and execute this in different ways. Um, all based on you know where we're from, where we live, what time period. There's so many things that have an effect on those desires. Um, one thing that I that I really do relate to Andrew uh, is you know I I as a kid I did revel in being different. I enjoyed for very different reasons. I think he liked being different to make himself better than people or somehow rise above people. I like different, being different from people because I just didn't want to be like everybody else. Uh, he, um, like it was a celebration of my, it was my own rebellion of individuality and not saying I was like a rebellious kid, but you know, just wearing that funky thing or saying that weird thing or just being slightly different from people was a form of expression to me. Um, a, a really great example that is cited a lot is that Andrew wore, uh, he his friends that knew him in school when he was much younger said he was the kind of kid that wore dimes in his penny loafers. If everybody else wore pennies, then he would wear dimes. And I immediately went, I, I, totally, I totally understand that. I get that. I understand that, 
that very simple, very childish, very very sweet um, effort to be stick di- out, to be stick different. out, to be different. Again, we have very different reasons for it, but I know the desire. And so once you connect to those things, everything else can kind of follow suit. Edgar, what would you say were the primary colors between you and Johnny? If you, if that's your process, where you you look for those types of things? Yeah. Well, I mean, you always have because because you have to. I mean, you have to establish empathy with your characters. So you, it, it's always very important to find those bridges. And uh, and I think that it was it was um, love for for our family. I mean, he was um, he was a, he was the, the the ultimate family man. I mean, he was very family oriented, and that is something that I really uh, that I really connect to. He was a protector, um, and 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 he had a he had a very 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 special very strong um, relationship with 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 his family, especially with his sister, with Donatella that Penelope Cruz plays you know portrays so brilliantly in the show, and uh, and Penelope also has a very very close relationship to her siblings. I have it with my sister, so that was we we found there. I know that both of us we found. A very strong connection, um, um, very similar, similar colors, so to speak, in that in that regard. Because in the end, you know, I mean, you know, you know, underneath all the colors and all the bling and all the flashy um, elements and all the exuberance and the beautiful house and the fabrics and the and the and the shine, I mean, what what you have there is a family that that basically they started this little this little business, a little shop in Reggio Calabria in southern Italy, and they took it to the world. So they never really, it's not, I mean, they never, they never, uh, they never left Reggio. They took Reggio Calabria to the entire world. And, and that is something that I can also relate to. I mean, as a Latin person, raised Catholic, I, I, I relate to those things. You know, I mean, the family values and, and, also, and, and also the miracles, you know, the, 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 the belief in miracles, that, that there was something miraculous. And, and you'll see, because um, I know how many episodes you've seen, so you're, you're, you'll, you'll, you'll discover this more, you know, as you, as you progress in the, in the show, that, 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 that the Versace family um, and, and, Janice, and Janice's life was, you know, was filled with, with, with miracles and a high sense of faith and, um, and, um, and, 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 and that is something also where, where, where I found a lot, of, a, a lot of similarities, you know, this, this, this belief that, this optimism and belief that things are gonna be, are gonna be better, that are gonna be all right, although, you know, tragedy, um, you know, strikes them, you know, when, when they least expect it. Yeah. Um, only because I feel like I didn't answer the question, I also wanna know what, what Edgar is thinking as far as what the hardest part was, uh, and I sort of answered another thing, which I tend to do, I apologize. I think just technically speaking, because we were shooting backwards, we had to play a lot of uh, chronological and emotional Tetris with uh, figuring out, okay, well, we're shooting this moment, which is an amalgam of moments we haven't done yet, which is the case with most films, but at least it's in a contained space of at least like a two-hour film where this is a nine-hour film, and so we're shooting moments that are based on moments for scripts we don't have yet. So, so that was a little difficult for me, but it's, it's fun because, you're again, you're not playing what happens. You're playing the emotional that makes those the emotional things that make those things happen. So that that was a little difficult, but a fun challenge. And also, maybe you don't have to think about this as actors in the scene, but or maybe you do think about this. But even though you're shooting backwards, it doesn't mean that there there can't there still has to be a tonal like a tonal presentation of what's going to come forwards. You still need to be sort of projecting or foreshadowing all the things that are coming afterwards chronologically in real life. Sure. Because part of the horror of the show is that you know what happens at the end of all of this. Right. So when we're in episode five and we're looking at everything being told backwards, we should still be thinking about what we saw in the first episode. Right. Yeah. So I don't true. know if that even applies to what you're doing in this scene. It sort of no. does. I mean, th- something Edgar said that uh, we, um, again, this is sort of a spoiler, um, their, their meeting is the question people always ask, what did they actually meet, did that ever happen? We th- we think it did. And the way we tell the story, it's uh, we th- we'll let the show speak for itself, the scene speak for itself. But we, for obvious reasons, didn't have a lot of time together, at least on camera. We spent a lot of time together off camera. But uh, something that really helped about this one particular scene is that it sort of set a precedent for both of us throughout all of our stuff alone, because every moment throughout the show kind of has implications on that e- to every to that scene and that everything scene, yeah. else. Yeah. So that kind of speaks to what you were saying as far as um, you've seen moments that as you even go the other direction in time, they still have 
you start to realize how much of an effect, not necessarily what happened, but the way they, the way they present themselves is such a, um, uh, I guess, a benchmark for kind of who they are at their core <laughs> throughout the show. And even though we didn't have scenes, we both had that scene in mind for oh, yeah. other scenes with other people. Um, Which also happened to be um, our first scene yeah, in the film. That's a nice story. You know, so it was the first time that that I that I walked Thrown into, into, the, into arena. the show and that I put on my prosthetics and that I became Gianni Versace and he became Cunan and it is this was the club scene. or is this the no opera? the other one? Don't say Sorry. it. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's not that. It's the other one. Yeah. Um, Got it. That that was the first time. That it's the one where we go to the zoo. That what? we yeah, <laughs> that we try exactly where they are. The animals where are they're eating candy. Good. Together, so <laughs> no. The the thing is that um uh, yeah, that was the first scene, the first the first time that we were you know both um Andrew and and Johnny and and that we worked together for the first time. It was everything the first time, yeah. and yes, as he said, I think that 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 scene has all this kind of like um we talked about it last week. These Eastern, you know, eggs um uh, oh, Easter eggs, eggs. Eggs. Easter eggs. E oh, again, yeah, yeah, yeah. again, I said yeah, it's okay. Again. Sorry, the man speaks Easter, five languages. Easter, it's okay. Yeah, no, no, Easter, Easter eggs. Easter, Easter eggs. <laughs> Um, element like to like to f like to find those th those eggs and to find those hidden elements that will connect to these characters throughout the whole the, the whole the whole show. So there will be things that that will happen to them um, individually that somehow you will you will feel that they reflect elements that were presented in that in that sequence, which is actually more of a scene. It's a sequence. Yeah, guys, uh, I love it. Congratulations! I think yeah. it's one of the best things on television right now. If Thank not one you. of the most fascinating and strangely put together, which I think is really daring and smart, and I can't wait to watch the rest of it. Uh, it premieres tomorrow night on FX, right? 10 p.m. 10 p.m. Check your local listings. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and is that a thing anymore? I don't know. I, hope, I kind of hope it is. I want it to be. So keep saying it. Yeah. <laughs> guys, give it up for Edgar and Darren. Let's hear Thank it. Thank you.